Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a book review on A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas. A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Maas continues the story of Feyre, who is barely holding on after surviving the horrors of Amrantha's court. Feyre paid a high cost in order to save the Fey and to save the man she loves, Tamlin. And there's still the bargain she made with the feared High Lord of the Night Court, Resand, where she has to spend at least one week of every month with him. Feyre has to learn to deal with her new powers, learn to deal with the actions she took at Under the Mountain, and figure out where her heart truly lies in the future she wants to live. So just as a heads up, a warning before I do proceed with this book review, uh, this particular review will have absolutely no spoilers for this book, the second book in the series. But this review might have little slight spoilers for the first book, A Court of Thorns and Roses. So if you have not read the first book, yeah, you definitely need to stop right now. <laughs> but yeah, no spoilers for the second book. Whew, you guys, oh my god, I loved this second book. It kind of initially started off and I was a little hesitant where things were going, but it's like once the book picked up speed and got going and it got sexy and dark, Oh my god, I freaking loved the second book. Uh, definitely lived up to all of my expectations. And you know, the thing about the first book in the series, A Court of Thorns and Roses, that first book, I was just so massively impressed with Sarah J. Maas's writing. Because Sarah J. Maas, what I really liked is that she didn't sugarcoat the story. You know what I mean? Um, that's my problem with a lot of young adult literature in general. Sometimes I feel that things are just sugar-coated. And Sarah J. Maas, she does not hold back. She does not hold back with the language or the sexuality or the violence or the gore. I mean, she really lets it loose. And me, I really appreciate writing like that. I really hate sugar-coated writing. <laughs> so that is what really impressed me about the first book. And she really went at it in this second book. If you thought the first book was kind of bad with the language and the violence. Oh boy, this second book really kicks it up uh, one more notch. <laughs> so now I'm kind of terrified. Good lord, what's in store for like the third book? <laughs> so yeah, the first book, uh, that book was kind of a, a twisted retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And I really love that. I loved that twist on, a, on an ancient fairy tale. So if the first book in the series was a twisted reimagining of Beauty and the Beast, this second book is like a twisted, darker, sexier, erotic retelling of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Almost, and I'm not gonna lie you guys, maybe this is too strong a word, but sometimes this book was verging into some porn territory. <laughs> and not gonna lie, I kind of liked it. <laughs> so essentially what I'm saying with this book, um, you definitely need to be a very mature reader. Uh, if you're not a very mature reader, if, if things kind of gross you out, or if you're, if you're squeamish, if you don't like sex, in books, yeah, this this book is definitely not for you. This series is probably not for you, let's put it that way. This, this series as a whole is definitely for very, very mature readers. So let's get into some more specifics here in regards to the story. Your, your liking of this book is, is quite honestly, it's gonna depend where you fall in the whole love triangle. Uh, meaning, do you ship Feyre and Tamlin, or do you ship Feyre and Resand? You're either gonna love this book, or you're gonna hate it. <laughs> so my love of bad boys, uh, that may let you know where I steer with this book, and if you can't tell how much I love this book, maybe that's kind of a little dead giveaway <laughs> the direction this book takes. And this book, it just takes the reader in so many different directions. You know, you have the first book, and with the first book in the series, you kind of think the series and these characters, they're going in one direction. But Sarah J. Maas, she kind of just totally does a huge flip 
with this narrative and yeah at the end of book one you think you're going this way but then in this book you go this way <laughs> and it's it's quite crazy but I really loved it because I was expecting certain things in this book to be far more predictable and yeah nothing in this book was ever really that predictable because it did totally just diverge in a whole different direction and what's more your feelings and loyalties to some of these characters are really put to the test in quite dramatic ways and the stakes that are being set up in this book are huge it's like it's no longer just a little small chunk of this world it's starting to turn into a very global thing with this world the threats that are arising and one of the biggest obstacles in this whole book is the fact that Feyre at the end of book one she walked away with the powers of all of the high lords all of their powers coursing through her veins she was a mere mortal at the start but now now she is more kind of a fae she's a fairy she's part of the fairy world now and she's really struggling with that fact she's struggling with her powers and yeah she's not quite sure this what the specifics of her powers are because it, it seems as if she has a lot of powers and what's more, Feyre is definitely at conflict within herself, not just with all these other characters, but with, within herself as well. And she has to figure out what to do with her powers. Should she train and you know, grow and develop her powers, become someone powerful? Or should she hold back and should she remain locked up and protected for her own good? So that is a big, huge thing going on in this book you know Feyre she had to kill a lot of people at the ends of book one she's still trying to overcome her emotions regarding what happened under the mountain just a lot of devastating things happened to her and to other people testing her relationships so here in book two she has to make even bigger decisions that will reflect the entire world and just to briefly gush over Resand, you guys, I don't want to get into too much here because, like I said, this is a non spoilery review. But oh my goodness, I loved Resand in book one. He was my favorite character. He was only in that book very briefly, but he made an impact on me. And yeah, book two, it, Resand is pretty much in this entire damn book, and I loved it. <laughs> and he continued to be my favorite character. I really loved the exploration of his relationship with with favor a very interesting complicated emotional stuff going on there and just to briefly mention some of the other characters in this story uh, a lot of new characters i wasn't expecting the amount of new characters that would pop up in this novel i, I really liked resan's little circle of friends uh characters like um let me look at my notes really quick so i can remember them all uh more and cassian and azrael and amran i really loved all those characters so yeah that's pretty much it for this book review i just really wanted to gush about it tell you all how much i enjoyed it i really don't have anything negative to say um sometimes this book i mean as you can see it is a huge book sometimes things can kind of drag out a little bit and it's a little bit frustrating so i almost kind of feel like this book could have been shortened a wee bit just to kind of keep the pace going more evenly i suppose and then Sergey Maz's writing, I continue, like I said, I continue to be very impressed with her writing. Uh, some of her language choices are a little odd to me. Just little things that, I don't know, just kind of little ticks for me. I don't know. Uh, the way she describes men and women in this world, instead of calling them men and women, she just calls them like male and female. So sometimes that's a little odd in the language the structure and just how it's said i don't know that's just something me personally but other than other than little things like that certain little language choices i'm i love her writing so you guys have you guys read this second book i just thoroughly enjoyed this from start to finish i loved the higher intensity i loved the higher drama i love the higher angst i love the deeper darker romance i love that the stakes are really high now just everything just to my liking so that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye guys.